Hello, welcome back to another video presented by Acuity PPM, where today we have a portfolio management software buyer's guide video that will help you make a better decision for your company and increase the likelihood of success. But as a reminder, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we're putting out great content that you do not want to miss and will help you better manage your portfolio. So with that, we've got a quick word of warning that we've got frank and candid points of view to share with you that we believe will help you make a better decision related to portfolio management software. It's based on industry experience and years of consulting with the Fortune 500, seeing the challenges that companies face when implementing traditional solutions. And in this video, we want to cover some of the essential considerations for evaluating PPM software, starting with project management versus portfolio management software, organizational maturity, usability, capabilities needed, organizational change, cost to implement, and portfolio management expertise. So the first aspect to consider is project versus portfolio management software. And I have to often ask companies, what is your priority? Are you focused on project management or portfolio management? I often have to tell companies that the, the current vendors, while they might be good at one, they're rarely good at both. So just because a company can do project and portfolio management doesn't mean that they're the right vendor for you. Be sure that you're very clear. Are we focused on project management or portfolio management? Because that will guide your software selection. Project management software is about managing individual projects. It's necessary, it's useful, but it's focused on the individual project. Portfolio management software looks at the whole portfolio of projects. It takes a strategic point of view. It aggregates project data to provide portfolio views. They're, they're very different even though there's overlaps. And when companies are looking for one solution that does both, they run the risk of a failed deployment. And part of the reason for that is there's many flavors of project management these days, not the least of which is Agile and Waterfall and other variations and many different use cases for project management software such that forcing your project managers to use a single project management tool could frustrate user adoption. And I've observed this several times that when this is pushed upon a team of project managers, they will likely do the least amount of work possible to satisfy the requirements of that system. When in fact they use something else to manage the project details. It's really not what you want and it defeats the purpose. What's even better is to get a portfolio management solution that works for you, that integrates with common project tools. That way, your project managers can manage the details in their tool of choice and you get the portfolio visibility that you need to make better strategic decisions. Next is organizational maturity. And if you've seen our other video, on assessing portfolio maturity, then you know how important this is. But we're gonna look at this from the lens of a couple of quotes from Gartner. And they state that 80% of project management offices, or PMOs, are below level three maturity. And when we're talking about organizational maturity, where level one is ad hoc or foundational basic, Level five is advanced, industry best class. 80% of project organizations are level one or level two. And it's not just Gartner, others have done studies on this as well. 
The next quote's powerful. Their 2016 Magic Quadrant said that uh, the vendors in that Magic Quadrant are most appropriate for organizations that have surpassed level three maturity. Okay, think about that. 80% of PMOs are below level three, yet the vendors in the Magic Quadrant are designed for more advanced PMOs. Okay, to say it frankly, that means 80% of the project teams should not be looking at the Magic Quadrant because those tools are too sophisticated, too advanced. Okay, I understand that companies gravitate toward the Magic Quadrant. The point here is understanding your level of maturity to be able to successfully utilize traditional PPM software that's traditionally also very complex. Even the mid-tier solutions, they recommend being a strong level two, meaning you're approaching level three, which really puts new PMOs at a disadvantage. Level one organizations new to portfolio management will be frustrated by trying to implement the vendors in the Gartner Magic Quadrant. That's why it's so important to find a solution that really matches your current capability maturity so that you are more likely to be successful. It increases your success rate. This is something that's not commonly talked about, but I've seen this play out so many times. This is one of the big factors for why PPM solutions fail is not taking into account the level of sophistication of the software with the actual capability of the organization. If you try to introduce a complex tool that the general user community is not ready to utilize, you're gonna risk your implementation. And so that's why you've gotta pair the two up. Don't go too advanced. And most of the solutions are, are, are quite advanced. They're, they're, there's a lot of functionality and you, you can easily frustrate your users, which then leads to a poor adoption or a failed adoption, which means you're not gonna get the data that you need to make better decisions. The goal is, is to make better decisions that drive strategic value. If your users don't like the solution, you're not gonna get the data. If you don't have the good data, you won't get the right information at the right time to make better decisions. That's why you get a PPM tool is to support all of that. Usability is also super critical. And there's a lot to say here. Pictures tell a, uh, tell a thousand words. And you can look at these two images and I think it, it explains very quickly the matter and the concept of usability. These are three more quotes from other uh, Gartner papers. The first one is most products have far more functions and features than organizations will ever consume. More functions and features than organizations will ever consume. Okay, think about that. That matches the image on the left. That is a real product, by the way. It's got lots of functions. It can do a lot of things. It's not very usable. In contrast, you've got a very simple tool on the right-hand side. It's also very usable. It gets it done. It gets stuff done. Smaller, more flexible solutions with higher levels of usability are critical to get people to actually want to use the software. If usage needs to be compelled, then this is an indication that the tools are the wrong ones. So true. And I've seen this play out in a lot of organizations. They go with the solution that meet, meets all 300 requirements, just like that knife on the left. And then people hate using it versus a solution that's fully functional, but very usable. 
you don't, if you have to compel people to use your PPM software, you're likely to fail. They have to want to use it, they have to like using it. So usability, and that's not just the user interface, it should have a clean user interface, but it should be delightful to use. When you get strong user adoption, you get good data, and that good data translates into the right information to make better decisions. That's what will help drive greater business value from your software. Third, quote, focus on user interface and usability in your tool selection process to achieve a much higher level of engagement from the people committed to executing on strategy. Okay, so that just underscores how important usability is. Your, your users need to like the PPM software. So a litmus test is, can they jump in without any training? How, how much can they use without even any training? Is it intuitive enough that they can just log in and be productive on day one? Okay, capabilities. This goes hand in hand with the usability and the maturity uh, discussion. Our point of view is to focus more on the capabilities that you need today than on the requirements for the future. In other words, what are you doing today that software could help with? If you draw up a long list of requirements for all the functions and capabilities that you think you'll need in the future, you're going to put your implementation at risk. Focus on what you need today. Now, I know conventional wisdom would say, now we got to drop our requirements. What do we think we need? We want to grow into the solution. And I agree with growing into a solution, but there's different ways of handling that. If you purchase a, a solution with more functionality than you, than you really need, like we just saw on the previous page, you're going to frustrate your users. Also, getting complex software to try to match or even fix your complex process will never work. My recommendation actually is try to simplify your process before getting software, especially if it's complex software, simplify the process so that it's easier for the software to meet your process. Now, if you're a brand new PMO, I'd say you can implement basic process and implement a simple lightweight PPM solution at the same time, hand in hand. If you've been managing in spreadsheets for years and you've got all these complicated processes and now you finally decided that you want portfolio management software, then you're gonna have trouble finding a solution that matches your complex process. Complexity is a killer both on the software side and on the process side. You'll do yourself a huge favor by simplifying your process or developing your process in tandem with implementing a lightweight solution. Now, these are the common capabilities, project portfolio tracking, status reporting, road mapping, intake, capacity planning, prioritization, time tracking, budgeting, etc. What are you doing today that software can help with? And then maybe add a little bit more. But be careful trying to get a big solution where you may never ever use that functionality, just like the previous quote stated. Of course, other important capabilities include reporting and dashboards and integrations. And we talked about integrations briefly. Very, very valuable. Integrate with project software. Integrate with social collaboration software. Integrate with data visualization software. Integrations are, are very important, more important than ever in relation to portfolio management software. Okay, organizational change. Bottom line, you've got to pay attention to it. And actually, there's a correlation between the complexity of the software that you select and the amount of organizational change required. So if there's any common theme it's that simplicity trumps everything. Simple process, 
simpler solution it correlates to a higher success rate for your software and just your portfolio management in general. But if you decide that you need complex software, the, the leaders in the Gartner Magic Quadrant, if those are the solutions you're looking at, you have to have help managing organizational change which is re really the people change. How much effort is needed to get the organization to adopt that complex solution that you've selected? Likewise, the easier or lighter weight the solution is, probably the less organizational change required, the easier it is to get users on board, the easier it is to get good data into the solution, the faster you're going to get a return on that software investment. So I really caution organizations from going too complex. But again, there is the correlation. The more complex the software, the more you have to manage organizational change. And that comes with another cost. Most companies do not have in-house change experts. They need to get consulting help to manage organizational change. And this brings us to the cost to implement the software. And it's more than just licensing, although the licensing obviously plays uh, a major part in the overall software cost. But there's other costs that companies may not pay as much attention to. You've got the implementation cost. That might involve hiring an outside consultant to manage the project. Again, the more complex the solution is, the more likely you need more help to implement that solution successfully. The lighter weight it is, the easier it is to implement. But those implementation costs also involve effort. How much effort is required from cross-functional stakeholders to get that solution implemented? Okay, again, the more complex, the more people you need involved to configure, to even actually consider what needs to be configured. How does it need to be configured? And then you've got the whole rollout and all the training required. So again, there's the correlation. But uh, the implementation cost could involve hiring external uh, help along with the internal effort. Then you've got the change cost that we were talking about briefly, organizational change. And again, if you are implementing a complex solution, then you likely need an outside change expert to come in to help manage the people change. Not just the technical implementation, but the, the people uh, that are going to be using the software, helping them transition onto the new solution and making sure that they are successfully adopting it. Another element of cost is headcount. And this is another cost that, frankly, a lot of companies overlook. They think they can just implement portfolio management software, but if they don't have the people already doing the work today, then they either have to hire additional resources or they need to uh, find people to do that work. But most likely, they've already got a full plate. So just adding one more thing onto their plate is not gonna help you. You really need people who understand portfolio management from the software and process perspective so that you can be successful across the board. And so it may indicate that you need additional headcount. But again, the, the, the more complex the solution is, the higher the likelihood of additional headcount. But also, just in portfolio management discipline in general, if you want to do things such as resource capacity planning, more data analysis, uh, you've got the data entry, you've got the communication. You need people who can do that work and know how to do it. So the, the tool is not gonna enter data for you. That's people. And you need a, a good portfolio manager, not just a system administrator, who can communicate, can work with the project teams to get the good data into the system, who can work with the stakeholders to disseminate that information to help them make better decisions. So that's a, an additional cost, potentially, with PPM software. Then there's the cost savings. In some cases, it's an increased cost. In other cases, there's, there's enough efficiencies that we're going to save money by adopting that solution. 
classic case is spreadsheets versus lightweight PPM software. If you're using spreadsheets today, there's hidden costs of version control, data integrity, the, the time it takes to, to build reports, etc. And so adopting lightweight software actually could save you a ton of time. And so that, that needs to be factored in to the cost to implement portfolio management software. And then lastly, uh, portfolio management expertise. How much expertise do you have in-house today? Goes back to the headcount discussion. How much expertise practically does the software vendor have? And I'm not talking about how much experience do they have implementing their own solution. I would ask them, how many PMOs have you personally built? How many scoring models have you built for prioritization? How many governance teams have you stood up? That real world experience makes a tremendous difference because you really want a, a partner on the portfolio management journey. Just getting help implementing software is not enough. Ideally, you'd have a partner that understands the nuances of portfolio management across different types of industries, different levels of maturity, so that they could help you go on the journey with you and better manage the portfolio. So thank you for watching this video. Leave a comment below. I certainly hope that this helped you. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Thank you.